Welcome back to Half A Hot Rods. If you're new to the channel, what we do here is prove time after time that you don't need to have a bunch of money, talent, or knowledge in order to have fun with cars or trucks. And what I usually have been working on is the square body. Just got the 57, so we're going to get started on that. Some other more modern projects for the most part. But my buddy Matt has been over here helping me with this stuff. And he was talking about it with somebody at his church, a gentleman named Stephen. And Stephen told him, hey, I've got an old car that you guys might like to work on, and it would really help me out. So Stephen told Matt that he had been working on this car himself. Uh, Stephen's a Vietnam vet. He's 70 some years old. And the last time he worked on this car, he was trying to adjust the clutch and he had a stroke. He now has the knowledge of how to do it, but he doesn't have the physical ability to do the clutch adjustments. So I don't have the knowledge, but I have the physical ability. Are you sure? We're going to take this opportunity to go over there and learn from somebody who's done this, which is kind of what I've had to do with everything I've done is figure it out as I go or ask somebody that already knows. So he needs our help to do the physical part. We need his help to get the knowledge part. And between the three of us, hopefully we can figure it out. But this car is something that I never thought that I would ever be working on. I've only seen these things at shows, never tinkered with one, never ridden in one, never really messed with them at all. And it's not my usual brand. So what we're going to do this week is we're going to go take a look at this car. Yep, that's right. It's a... It's a Ford. Fa it's a Ford. A Ford. Ah. You will not use the F word. It's a Model A. A 1930 Model A. And we're going to see if we can help them out with it. So here's the 1930 Model A. Yeah, he's got a front door. Now the floorboard comes off in two pieces. Okay. This is the carpet center, and it lifts off. And then this board that's under here will lift out. Okay. And then there's two screws that hold that back board on. Okay. And it will come out. So what are you saying is behind you there on the floor? Okay. See that pressure point? Yeah. So he says what's happening is you need to adjust these screws. Yep. Because this is not getting contact with the flywheel. You gotta adjust the fingers in further. We need to push it in further. Right. Okay, that's what I saw. I, I watched a couple videos on it because I'd never worked Those on these. Those are the original tools to the car on that thing right there. <laughs> Did they come with the car? Or you? They Those were usually under the seat. Wow. When you get it, and that's a jack for it. And those are all So they gave you all these jacks. tools with the car? Yeah. There, there's a toolbox under the, under the front seat. <laughs> now they have to tell people not to drink the contents of the battery. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's real. Yeah. <laughs> no. People are so stupid. It's that, got the original plates on it, you would probably notice. And the should get a car. That's yeah. neat. 1930. You want the hood down or up? Oh, it's yeah. fine up. Okay. A little flathead. And the windshield opens too. This just goes like that. Okay, yeah, okay. That's neat. And uh, this is the only model that comes with the, uh, rear, the rear seat fold down in the middle. Hmm. See it? A little armrest in there. And these are all for, this is my the, my pride and joy, the one right here. Yeah, yeah. And the assembly of it was over there. It showed you a picture of it all apart and I put it together. So these ones back here, these are all cars that you've owned? Yeah. That's pretty cool. That was actually my car. And that's a 1929 Stearman behind it, and I took that in California. Huh. That is really cool. Yeah. And that there, that corner one, was, is uh, one that the owner of the house used to own. The guy that had the house built. Okay. That was his car. And then the 
museum that's over here in uh, Omaha. There's a big round picture of that. It's it's round and it's got that in the middle. So this is the cover that we're after inside there to get yeah, loose yeah, and slide it up. Off. That's where you're supposed to be able to adjust those nuts and bolts. Okay. Yeah, the ones I watched, they all did them on the bench, so. Yeah, they usually pull the engine. Yeah, the those are marked what they are, what they go to. 1915. Is that screwed in? I think it is. No, the second. So we just pull that carpet back to get to the panel? I take it out. Okay. And snap. Okay. We just pull up on this? And you just pull up. Okay. See, yeah. you see what I'm talking about? And then it just goes up over the stretch. Okay. That's out. It should be like right there. Right. That's what I'm thinking. Right here. Well, what, what is going on here? What are those two pedals for? Uh, one of these is starter. Okay. And, oh, that's throttle. This is probably starter. Brake and clutch. clutch. Yeah. Okay. I think. You think. I'm not sure what that is. And there's probably timing advance somewhere on here. Well, is that the... You could adjust the timing on the roll. That might be advance, since it's got kind of a dial. Yeah. Look at that dash. I know. Flashlight clipped on. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to grab a light this morning. I didn't think about that. I should have. What is this, amateur hour? There's a screw, I think, right here in this corner somewhere. Right there. Uh -huh. That comes loose. And there's another one on that side. That's it. Okay. And the whole thing is coming out. I imagine just about everything for these is getting hard to find, isn't it? No, not copies, but the copies aren't real good, let's put it that way. Right, right. I guess we can slide that plate up and see what it does. Yeah, let's uh, try to take it apart as little as possible. Yeah, it should be two screws. When I came out to Texas, I drove one out here from California at night. At night? Yeah, I'd take off driving just as it was getting dark, and then I'd pull over at daytime to let it cool it's down. No. I think I see it. Yeah. Or I thought I saw it. I don't see it now, but... That screw's shorter than I thought it would be. And now it's gone. Gone forever. I don't think we need to take them all the way out. I think we just got to back them out a hair. and Just enough to free that plate. Let me do some experimenting with that. Uh, the one outside. One outside, so I can see which what does what, because I don't remember off the top of my head. Right. It's spring loaded. There's springs in there. Right. Yeah. So you can adjust them in and out. See. Mm -hmm. Just like. See that finger moving? Yeah. Well, that one was working, but it was slipping. You know what I mean? So right. I bought a new one. Yeah, it looked like it chewed the end of the fingers off there. Yeah, it did. You can see there. Yeah, this one's gone. Gone on three of them. Like maybe these three were adjusted up more than these two. Or yeah. these three. Whoever did it didn't do it right. Yeah. You want me to go get the books on it? No, I think we... No, I just gotta, I gotta work it out in my head how it looks here so I can do it right in there. All six of those really need to be even. Yeah. So adjusting these though, how does it move this? It teeter totters. You adjust all of them because there's a pivot point in the middle. Mm -hmm. So they all need to be adjusted evenly so that when the clutch is out, so we don't have pressure on the fingers, this is out as far as it goes. Because when you push in the clutch, it pushes on these fingers and draws that away. Right. And disengages it. So I'm not sh real sure how this is going to work in the car. Because I did not find that. What I found was they take it out. They take it out. They adjust this to like five eighths of an inch mm -hmm. from the top, mm -hmm. and that's where it's supposed to be. Um, Could we adjust it from five eighths measuring inside? I don't know how we're going to get a measurement. That's the problem. Oh, they put something flat across. Yeah, there. yeah. I mean, because it's. I mean, they're doing it with a caliper. Oh. If they're not even. You end up with this. Pressure straight springs on that.
aware of friction spacing. Readjustments of release levers must never be made under any circumstance. The only adjustment for clutch wear is at the bottom of the clutch pedal. The pedal must have one inch free play or movement before it starts to disengage the clutch. So if the clutch pedal is not adjusted right, it might be holding it off. Uh, we could start with adjusting the clutch pedal if you want. That's what it recommends. So what happens when you push the clutch there, Joe? It's not even coming close to contacting those fingers. No. So it's not pushing it in when you... No. Oh. It's pushing the... So where's the... Like the, the throw-out bearing is starting to move as soon as you move the pedal. But uh, those fingers are just way far away. Yeah, I see what he's talking about here. Okay. I mean, we can we can bring it out till it just barely contacts. So, mm -hmm. watch the throw out bearing. Okay. I mean, it's moving right now with the pedal. But right. you see the you see the fingers we were monkeying with out there, right? Right. Oh, it like doesn't even hit them. Yeah, it's. I think it's barely touching them there. We'll push all the way to the floor when it happens. Because it says there's supposed to be one inch of free play. Okay. Well, that's at least an inch, right? there it. yeah it's just barely contacting in there so I mean that's probably an inch right it makes me nervous doing it that way because it's not real exact and I don't want to put him in the same position he's got on that other one mm hmm I mean we could probably make it work but I don't know how long it'll work the way I understand it the right way to do it is on a bench thing is, I think I'm doing it good enough to work but I don't know that I'm doing it right the thing is like why would they have that service plate there if you weren't ever supposed to do that? That's a good point. Right. Right. You, 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 that's the other thing to think about, right? Right. I'm betting I'm betting this thing took a lot of tinkering to keep it on the road back in the oh, day. Oh, yeah, I think it was constant. Because, I mean, they gave you a whole toolbox. Too. Yeah. You weren't supposed to get in and drive six or seven hundred miles in a day like... Like we do now. Yeah. yeah. I did, though. <laughs> that's cool. All right, I think I understand. I'm, I'm sure I understand how it's supposed to work now. Okay. And I feel like I can get them to adjust out and touch that. Everything I saw reading and, and looking at it says you're not supposed to do it that way. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> if you want me to do it that way. warned that far, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, if you're okay with me adjusting it out till it touches. Whatever you think, it's fine with me because I have no luck with it. Okay. okay. All right. Well, I haven't adjusted those, so. Okay. Well, we'll, That's the way they were. we'll give it a shot. I know a lot about the Model A. I've had one since I was 19. Can like help. I said, I had all them pictures. How old My are you now? 73 as of June 7th. All right. Well, happy birthday. This is the first. This isn't the first one I had, but I sold the first one and I bought this one. And it, and this one's the same body style and everything. It's supposed to have play. Right. So let's set that. We'll set the pedal. we got to figure out a way to do it so that it's got that inch of free play. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just bring the fingers up to it. Right. And that way it stays steady. And as we're turning it around, we bring it up to where they just touch. Yeah, when you push on the clutch, the pressure plate, the bear throw out bearing is supposed to push on those fingers. Right. But that pedal should move a little bit before yeah. it contacts the fingers, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Like I say, that one there with the trailer on it, that other picture over there with that trailer on it, I uh -huh. drove it here from California, <laughs> in California. How long did that take you? Seven days driving at night. Oh, no. Do you have to do much working on it in that time? No. I lost a, a, a fan belt. That's all. <laughs> And I had one of them in my trunk. I always carry one in my right. trunk. Here's yeah, a better yeah, book yeah. than that. Right. Let's, uh, no, th this, is, this is saying the same thing we're saying. Okay. okay. Let's figure out a way to hold that. See, this is troubleshooting my clutch. Uh, yeah. It's a, here's a camper I built. Yeah. This is the outhouse I behind. It had a hot stove inside. So a camper with the outhouse behind it. Yeah. That's neat.
There's more pictures of it. There. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can figure out how to hold this in place. Hey Matt. Yeah. Can you press this clutch pedal to the point where it's just just past it, even with the brake? Yeah, I can do sure. it. Let's see if I can clamp it down here to hold it. No more. No more. There you go. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh. Rinse. Repeat. Rinse. Repeat. Okay. Let's take those vice grips off. Matt, you want to crank it slow? The hand crank? Yeah, and just so I can see that it turns independent. Try to start it. Don't never put your thumb over it. Right, so you can. Yeah, you get that. Because the back part is just your arm. Right. So. Maybe not your arm, but an average human. Go easy. So it's got to go in a little bit right. and find the notch. Okay. Now to check engagement, we probably should jack the back up or okay. just run over you. Yeah. I'm willing to take that chance if you are. I wish no reward. Have you crank a little here, just nice and easy. Okay, we'll go look in now, here. You turn when you do that. And you watch the clutch. Is it possible that only one would turn? Yeah, only the one on that side. This one's turning. Okay, then I'm wrong. <laughs> been a long time. So, <laughs> since you were wrong last? Yeah. Yep, I believe I know, you. I know a lot about these old cars. Is it turning? Yep, it's turning. So it's engaging. That's yep. good. Keep turning it. We're, we're enjoying the show back here, will you? And then we got to see if the, you push on the clutch pedal if it disengages. Okay. All right, if you want to turn it so it starts turning, and then I'll push in the clutch. Still turning. Okay, clutches in. It's not turning. And clutches out. It's turning. It's working. What a hot dog. It's working. You guys did a great, great job. <laughs> you should be proud of yourselves. I'm pretty excited about this, to be honest with you. Yeah. I'm starting to feel like modern cars need a service plate like that. Right? Yeah. We so, spent two weeks fighting with a hydraulic clutch. Oh, oh a, a friend down the street's got a 36 uh, Morgan, and it's got a hydraulic clutch. A, a 1936? Yeah. Sounds like we need to just come meet your neighbors. Yeah. He lives, his name's uh, Ernest, and he bought a lot of my Model A's. That's what the rotary cap looks like. Okay. And really? There's, there's a nut bolt that goes down through it. It's a big screw. And what you do is you, uh, you 
take that pin out I told you about, uh -huh. and you put it in the engine, and you take this and you turn it to number one. See, this goes on top. Okay, there's what I'm used to seeing. Uh, you take this off. It goes on top up here. And I actually use this when I time it. Let's see, it goes this way. Yeah, see that slides down there? And you'd have that bolt in there loose. And you'd turn this on your distributor just past number one. Right. And then slide back halfway, and it's perfectly timed. That's all there is to it. That's a Ford. I love it. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess we put that plate back on and put it back together in here. Did you want to see if it started since you were charging it? No, but it'd be easier to charge it completely up and set the timing before I try to run it. Oh, okay. I'm sure to work at the wheel turn. Yeah. No doubt in my mind. We're glad we come give you a hand. I know I couldn't have done it alone. No way. Like I say, I was right underneath there working on the clutch arm when I had a stroke. Yeah. And they came out and got me in the ambulance. My meter went off. Yeah. That's an old Ford Spotlight and it had this switch on top of it. This guy? Yeah. That's neat. They only had one. You know why? You see the ribs and the lights, the light goes like this. Right. The spotlight would be aimed in between them. Oh, okay. So it would penetrate about 20 feet further. Makes sense. Right. You know the most expensive tool that's right there? Which one do you think it is? Expensive tool? Those are the Model A tools. Which one? They all say Ford on them. Which one do you oh, think wow. is the most expensive? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess this is just 4 inch. No. No? Look in the middle. Oh, is it the, the gauge? No. Up all the way to the top. To draw the oil? What is that? To change the oil? In the no, it's what you knock the valves out with. Oh. It's this tool right here. This tool, if you look, it goes over the valve and then you push it. You push it with a hammer and it knocks the valve out. See the valve right here, how it's setting? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, see this is a valve guide? To knock that out, you use a to that tool and it pushes it out so you, the valve will pop out of there. <laughs> and that's the only one they don't reproduce either. Oh, wow. See yeah. yeah, that's my Mason stuff. That's cool. Yeah. My Mason and American, this American Legion here, and that's right. Mason. Yeah. And this crank, they have a toolbox that goes in here too. It hooks right on here and hooks right on there, and it goes right here. Yeah. And it's a tool, regular toolbox. And I made that little trunk that goes in a little gate. Looks like a gate that hooks to the back side of the running board, and that little box with all my books in it sits in there. <laughs> it's waterproof. behind it. Yeah. I got a picture. This picture is when I brought it. 
through Omaha. Yeah. That was the coupe. I drove that one here. That was the one that went from California to Texas? Yeah. Anaheim, California. Next street over from Disneyland. <laughs> that was a fun trip, I'll tell you. Well, I'm not sure if we did that 100% the right way, based on the little bit of research I did. But I will say that we did get it to work. Steven is happy as can be with it, the fact that it engages and disengages like it should. And I'm pretty tickled that I had the opportunity to work on a car like that. Um, like I said at the beginning, I never thought I'd be working on a Model A. And this really was a, a legitimate show car. Uh, not the kind of car that I normally work on for sure. So I thought it was pretty cool. He was super thankful to us that we were able to help him out. I was really thankful to him that he was able to share his knowledge and some of his stories about the stuff he's seen and done and car related or not. It, it was pretty cool to just hang out for a day. Um, so if you like what we're doing here, click like on the video, subscribe, check out our other videos. Most of my stuff, like I said, is a little more modern than the 30, but I, I wouldn't say I'll never work on one again because that was really cool and I'm willing to give just about anything a shot. So if you like what we're doing, check us out on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. And until next time, remember, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.